Hello friends, myself Professor Sevinod Pillai, welcome to Android programming session. In today's session, I'll be showing you how to install Android and configuring the Android. The second step, I'll be showing you simply creating a Hello World program in Android. Before installing Android and working with Android, you should have a basic understanding of an Android. What is Android and why we need Android. Android is an operating system mainly been designed for mobile application development. There are many devices in the market which are having Android as an operating system. It may be a mobile, it may be a tablet, and it may be a television. Android has been designed with a purpose that it can be used in any devices for wide ranges. That's the main aim of Google, not only for mobile devices. But we are now more concentrating on how to use Android as an application development for the mobile devices. Let's get started with Android installation. Before getting into installation, you should know that Android requires minimum some softwares to work it perfectly. It requires Java SDK, it requires an ID, an Eclipse. It does not make sure that uh, it is not compulsory that an ID is required, but it is quite easy for the development. Yes, it is possible to develop an Android application without ID using command prompts or you using your own editors. If you're using Eclipse, then you need an ADT plugin so that an Eclipse can communicate with Android. You require Android SDK, that's a library which we are we going to use the Android or with the help of which we will be going to develop an application in Android. So let's get started. For SDK you can just go to Google and Java SDK you just say I want to download Java. Okay, Download it and install it. I do hope said that you know Java. Okay, After installing it you just check it up it has been properly been installed or not. Just run the Java C in the command prompt or in the terminal and Java command. So you will find something like that and you will say that you the Java is installed. Simply go to Google and write download Java. You will get some links like this. It may be a Java website or an Oracle website. Get it done and I hope so that is minimum required and I will not be going to cover in that my session. Secondly you require an ID. It is not that also that Eclipse is the only ID available which is able to communicate with Android. Yes. It is true that it is possible with NetBeans also. Okay, So if you are a good uh, person who really would like to work with NetBeans, yes you can use NetBeans also. But I recommend Eclipse because most of the developments and even Android people do recommend an Eclipse as one of the IDs to be used up. Okay, So for the Eclipse you just go to eclipse.org slash downloads. Okay, So you will have two options either you can use Eclipse J2W developer edition one or else you can use Eclipse uh, ID for only specific for Java one. The J2W is one is for the web application development also. Okay, I have downloaded this. Okay, you can select any of them. Okay, uh, it is up to you. Just download it, extract it into a particular folder. So I have already done it in my space. Okay, I'll just show you. So after downloading Eclipse, I have extracted it. Okay, and after extracting, you'll find something like this. Okay, folder structure. Okay, so Eclipse is already been installed after doing so. Second step is like now you need android sdk android sdk is the library okay just go to developers.android.com slash sdc slash index.html or else you can go to android.com and then you can go to the redirect to developer section in that you will find and download sdk okay it's same procedure you select download it will be downloaded in a zip format extract it okay after extracting it you have to manually download different operating system versions so you must be knowing that android is available in 1.5 it is available in 1.6 that's version it's something like uh, in windows you have different versions in ubuntu you have versions similarly android is having a different versions with different upgradations so 1.5 is a w quite an old one okay it is good for testing one 1.6 is there 2.2 is there okay so 3.0 is there 4.0 is there so different are there so you download the sdk then you have to download different versions of operating system you would like to have you can have as many as you require okay but uh, as in uh, how you download all of them it will increase your size to be downloaded so initial stage you can just simply download this thing then how to download different versions i'll show you if you're using uh windows it will be quite easy download it the sdk extract it to a particular folder you'll find an sdk manager outside only so that's an exe file executable file you double click on it it will start asking you which different versions you wanted if you're using a linux as like i'm using okay so you have to go to specifically to tools directory and there is a android sh file script file you have to run that through terminal i'll just show you the how go to this particular path that is in the software's android sdk tools path so i'll go to terminal 
so you can see that I'm seeing this particular file here okay so I have to run that so I'll run it it will be asking uh, give me an options like uh, what are the uh, different versions of already been installed I've already installed it so it will not be showing installed packages if I go to there so it will show you that these are the packages being already been installed here okay so I can update and I can refresh and all those things so if you're doing the first time it won't show this thing way it will be asking you different versions are available okay so uh, you have to select which versions you want to have it and you can select and you can download it okay so I, I expect you have understood how to do that also okay so we have Android SDK now what is the plugin why we need plugin now Eclipse is a different software and you want Eclipse to communicate with Android SDK okay so much easier way what Android people has done it they have created a AVD Pungli okay so it's plugin installing Eclipse plugin is option over here okay so there is two options uh, you can get it how to install it one is like uh, go to Eclipse and specify this in the repository how to do that I'll show you uh, once you go to the extract the Eclipse that is something like this okay select Eclipse and double click it it will ask a workspace I hope so you know the workspace concept is a space where all your projects will be done so if you do that you'll get something like this screen okay so go to help go to install new softwares okay and select add okay select add okay specify the name and specify the location okay of the that one which is been specified in the website okay so you can do like that way okay so this you specify it here one problem is it is ma mainly I faced is like if you're having some firewall or something in your laptop or PC it won't work it may take longer time also so such problems are there with it it depends upon the type of the internet connection you're having it and all settings your PC is having so recommended one is if that is not working the best option is what you can do is something like this there it is available in a zip format download this is zip okay then go to uh, same way help install new software select add okay what I've shown you instead of specify a name instead of specifying the URL just specify select archive and select that AVD where you have kept that AVD okay select okay it won't uh, one important thing is there after doing that it just deselect all these options okay else it will own once again it will try to connect to the uh, in internet and try to connect to the server after doing that it will ask you a restart you just do the restart of the Eclipse it will do it automatically just click OK after doing that you'll find some icons like this these are the icons you'll get into Eclipse and you'll come to know that Eclipse has finally installed or you can say install the plugins you have done the Eclipse you have installed you have installed first install the Java okay so I just repeat you have done a Java SDK you have Eclipse ID you extracted it you given him the Eclipse ADT plugin okay so Eclipse knows how to talk to Android now you have Android SDK in a particular location in your drive you have extracted it you run the Android SH or you if you are in Windows you have run the SDK manager after doing so now you need to tell Eclipse where SDK is there so then only you can use the libraries how to do that go to Windows okay go to preferences in Eclipse go to Windows preferences there is a folder in Android a section in the left hand side that is Android okay so I have specified him browse and specify in the path okay make sure that you specify the path till this much so you should see these folders of Android SDK okay so select that it will automatically select apply it will automatically show this many Android operating systems you are having and these are the versions and APIs are there so I do understand now and now you can develop an Android application in me so I hope so you have understood all these things and we are done the first part of it we have installed Android SDK we have installed the Eclipse, we have configured it so I can say my laptop is ready to work with Android application okay so let's create a simple hello world application it's not quite difficult go to file new other and you can select an Android and you can select Android project so this is a round way process you can select from here that's one option file new other and you select an Android project that's one option or else you can do directly from here okay if you select directly it will open a directly an Android SDK project I'll just show you once again so you'll get an idea file new go to other go to Android and select Android project and select next so the screen which you are getting here is same as what you got from here also okay so let's say hello world hello application 
okay now it's asking for which particular what is your target that's which operating system you you want to test it so i'm specifying android 1.5 okay so now it has given an application name it has been given a min sdk min sdk is the minimum sdk that uh, it will be running so it is quite possible that you have developed in 2.2 but it may even run in 1.5 also because the min sdk you have specified that okay so that is possible in the package name is quite important i'm giving com.binot okay it is two level package it's compulsory in android it can't be single that is it is not possible to specify com you can see here it is showing package name must be at least a two identifiers so i specify com.binot everything is okay now just simply click select finish in eclipse it is quite good it will create the folder structure it will cre create the generate file the r or java files and all required xml files and everything will be done Okay. I'll explain you what is the folder structures and all. Okay, let some simply let's create it. Okay, you can see it has done it at the back end. I have created the uh, AVD also, so it is taking a little bit of time. Maybe I think so. That's maybe the reason. Normally, it don't take that such a long time. Okay, so finally it has done it. Okay, so. One simple application is done okay now hello world i didn't do it anything but it it will show me a hello world application how now i'll explain you what are the folder structures and what are the things are there but before running it how i'll run it and how i'll test it you need some you, either you need a physical device which is having an error operating system or second is you can create an uh, emulator okay it is not a simulator it is emulator it is exactly the same 99.9% .9 the same what is having in the device but it is recommended that still you test with the device only okay but uh, you can always say that if it is runs in a emulator it should be having the same output 99.9% .9 in the same actual device also so to create an emulator go to Android SDK AVD manager Windows go to Android SDK AVD manager okay I've already created one uh, I'll just show you how to how I created select new specify any name XYZ name specify the target for which we have specified now if you see here i have specified at the starting that i am going to develop it for android 1.5 so the emulator should also be 1.5 yes it is possible you can you can select 2.2 but generally it is says like this is the device this application is designed for this particular operating system so i want to test it in the emulator of that particular device only so select that and select start it will be started okay it may take a long time so i just started it pre i've already given it so it won't come so fast so be patient it will take long time generally okay so i have started previously only so you'll see something like this okay let's try and test this particular application here select right click on the hello world go to run as and select android application so you need some uh, content here okay so first you need a console okay go here select the plus sign here okay and select console okay so you'll have a console over here just drag it here select and drag in this particular location so you can see here what is happening what are the things are there and you'll see the hello application dot apk file has been there apk is nothing but a android package file okay that's a final file being there it is something you can consider in windows people do consider it as an exe executable it is much easier for people to understand it is something like an executable of windows but it is an apk file which is generally been installed it is having all the necessary xml files resources and java codes so it says it has been starting up an activity okay so and you will see here a simple hello world is here okay now you will be a surprise how this is done i'll just quickly give you an idea what is the folder structure and all those things so it will automatically create ssc that is the source folder it will have the package which i have specified it will automatically create the activity and in the next session i'll be explaining you what is activity and all those things okay just a brief introduction i'll give you if you need five screens or you need 10 screens in your application android applications that many activities is required so activity is nothing but simply a particular screen to be shown to a user so my hello world if you see it it requires to be shown a simple this screen is nothing but it is an activity because i need one screen to show these things okay so one activity is there system automatically creates one activity and gives to you activity is simply having the logic okay so the display all things is written in the resource layout section Okay, so Android is divided two parts. That is one is coding section that is all from here and resources is having all the 
resources things that is it is having a specific folder called layout which is having all the layouts that is how you will design it okay so if you have five activities that is five java files you will have five xml files also generally in the layout folder that is each xml file linked with a particular activity so in activity i'll be having logics and layouts i'll be having the design concepts okay drawable is a folder where i can put my icons or images values is a folder android believes that the whatever string values you want to use in android it is better you declare in the uh, strings.xml file and you do reference it here in the main.xml file or in the other resources places so in main.xml if you'll find it it's a graphical one uh, you don't have to worry it's only xml no it is not like that i'll just select 1.5 it will be loaded much faster I don't know why my mo laptop is today quite quite slow. Okay, so you'll see something like this. Hello activity is there. Okay, you will have a graphical layout. You have text box buttons. You can drag and drop them. Okay, and if you go to main dot xml, you'll have a coding. I'll explain linear layout, what it is, text view, and all in my other sessions. Okay, so we have this thing. Gen is a automatic generated file. Okay, we don't have to mess up with it. Uh, it is having an R Java file. This is a reference file. That is, uh, we always activity always get resources through R Java file. So R Java works something like an, um, a pointer for us. Okay, so we don't have to mess it. We are not actually allowed to do any changes in that also okay so it java recommends uh, i mean android people recommends that is auto generate please don't modify it it's referencing basically all the resources which we have specified there okay you can see that layout is there string is there icons is there it's all been referenced here we access it from there only okay so basic idea we got it we have a src we have a pa package we put all the classes java classes here gen is automatic generated file so we don't want to access it this is the our library we are going to access it access folder we are not going now it is generally having the files okay so if you want to store some files and all it will be stored in assets folder resources will generally have three folders drawable which have all the images layout is having all the layout related that is if you have five activities five pages so five xml files are there values is a reference file which will have all the values and all now this is one of the android manifest.xml file it works something like an index file in that you have to specify all the permissions all necessary activities if you have five pages you have created you have to specify to him if you have created any service you have to specify to him if you have created broadcast you have to specify him if you have created the package that you have to specify what is the version everything so it works something like an entry point or you can say having all the records not detailed but having everything with him okay so it is the main file which is having all the configuration informations it is having multiple tabs manifest application i've di directly opened the manifest xml file but it is having different tabs all having like you want to have you want to use uh, bluetooth you have to get permission then that is from the manifest file only so you do permission do allow put permissions here it will be entered here so this is the main file which is required which is compulsory and it is automatically created so I hope so you have understood a simple hello world application you have some idea of folder structures if you have any queries you can put you can post here or you can just email me okay in the next sessions we'll be seeing all more details what are the activities how to call one activity to another and all those things I hope so I have able to clear all these things all the topics which have there so we have seen installation and we have seen hello world thank you and have a nice day